basic facts related to neonatal resuscitation. So most newborns make the transition from uh, intrauterine to extrauterine life without intervention. So more than 95% of the times a baby would uh, try, I mean, transition safely. I say more than 95% because even though the, some babies may need IPPV, these are babies, some of them, most of them are in primary apnea and they will manage on their own with time. Uh, before birth, pulmonary blood vessels in the fetal lungs are tightly constricted. The alveoli are filled with fluid and not air. Newborn resuscitation is usually needed because of respiratory failure in contrast to older children and adults, uh, especially adults, where cardiac component comes in as well. Cardiac arrest due to heart attack and things are not common in children. So mostly it's a respiratory failure. And here it's a respiratory failure related to the failed transition to extra train life. The most important and effective step considering this is to ventilate <coughs> the baby's lungs. So most of the steps in the NRP would be focused on ensuring that you are ventilating the lungs appropriately before you move on to uh, anything else related to that. Five percent of the term newborns will receive positive pressure ventilation and some of these uh, babies are in primary apnea and they may respond to stimulation alone as well as I mentioned earlier. Two percent of the term newborns will be intubated. So most of the babies who are in secondary apnea will need intubation and this will be around two percent. One to three babies per thousand live births will <coughs> receive chest compression or emergency medication. So this is fitting with the same group of babies where we say the HIE risk is one to three per thousand. So most of these babies who are severe asphyxia will come in this category. And as we will discuss moving on, teamwork, leadership and effective communication are critical to successful resuscitation of the newborn. Just a quick run through of the fetal circulation. Again, uh, there is a detailed video on the fetal circulation as well as the importance of delayed cot clamping. Here I'm going to stress on the impact of delayed cot clamping. So the umbilical vein brings in the oxygenated blood from the placenta. Uh, most of the oxygenated blood is taken through the eustachian valve to the ascending aorta which supplies the brain. The right ventricle pumps blood into the uh, pulmonary vessels. This is oxygenated blood and uh, instead of going through the lungs, only 10% of it goes through the lungs which is fluid filled. The rest of it is shunted through the ductus to the descending part of the aorta. So the oxygen level drops a little bit because the vena cable well blood return gets mixed in the right atrium and so its saturation is little lower compared to what goes through the eustachian valve to the upper part of the body. The pulmonary artery, the umbilical arteries bring back the deoxygenated blood and this is the fetal circulation. After birth, when the cord gets clamped, there is an increase in the systemic vascular resistance. The PDA closes, the shunting through the foramen ovale stops and uh, the ductus venous is constricts as well. So the umbilical venous circulation obviously stops. So instead of being a parallel circuit, I mean the uh, parallel circuit, the blood circulation becomes, uh, the lung starts opening up as well. So the uh, pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation start running in parallel as it happens after birth. The fetal lung is filled with fluid. Part of it gets absorbed if there is a labor process and when there is an absence of the labor process like a, um, a cesarean section which is elective or a precipitate labor, there is not enough time for this fluid to get absorbed so the baby comes with more fluid in the lungs. When the lung starts inflating, the air opens the lungs and this is how the blood vessels will open up when the oxygen exposure happens the vessels which are constricted open up as well. So both the lung volume increasing and the lung blood vessels opening up